House Resolution 183, resolution condemning anti-Semitism as hateful expressions of intolerance that are contradictory <coughs> to the values and aspirations that define the people of the United States and condemning anti-Muslim discrimination and bigotry against minorities as hateful expressions of intolerance that are contrary to the values and aspirations of the United States. On this vote, the yeas are 407, the nays are 23, voting present, one. Two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the resolution is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Members on both sides have questioned the loyalty and patriotism of members of this House. The trope that, is, that support for Israel, particularly among Jewish Americans, is the result of a dual loyalty to Israel and the United States is deeply offensive to me. What I find equally despicable is a somewhat analogous dual loyalty trope increasingly deployed against Muslim Americans. This includes the recent implication by one of our colleagues that another colleague is a spy, and a state Republican Party poster in the West Virginia State Capitol that implied an association between that same colleague and the September 11, 2001 attacks in New York. Indeed, statements have repeatedly been made in the recent past by public officials, including the President, which can fairly be characterized as anti-Muslim more generally. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. I apparently uh, am giving Rep. Omar more credit than uh, the speaker is because I don't believe she is naive. I believe that she knows exactly what she's doing. It is an American value, by the way, to have reasonable, legitimate criticism of a government, whether it be the U.S. government, Israel, or any other government. It is not an American value, though, to be hurling anti-Semitic rhetoric. Let me suggest at the outset that no party be too self-righteous on the issue of supporting prejudice and bigotry uh, too often. What makes this so dangerous, and the reason I will vote against this resolution is because we came here because of an anti-Semitic remark. And we came here to condemn anti-Semitism. But this resolution, as changed up over the last hour, now condemns just about everything. It is unfortunate that the President of the United States has shown a complete lack of leadership on these issues and has, in fact, fanned the flames. As chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, the CBC remains committed to building a more perfect union by engaging in constructive dialogue that affirms America as a nation welcoming to all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding. And all of us must remember, as members of Congress, as President of the United States, that our words are weightier once we cross the threshold into Congress, and indeed they weigh a ton when someone becomes the President of the United States. We left out the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We left out Wiccans. We left out Jehovah's Witnesses. We left out disabled people who are often discriminated and had hateful things about. We also, in the thing, found out that the only ones that we're going to condemn getting death threats are Jewish members and Muslim members. We're not condemning anything else.